My name is Howard Anderson. My age is 83 years old, and I come from Gordon's First Nation. Um, can you please tell me your regiment or battalion? Or battalion? <clears throat> I was in the Royal Canadian Army Service Corps, First Division, and I went to the, I went into Second Corps after when I got old enough to be in the army. Um, how long were you in the army? Five years. Were you engaged in active duty in battle or were you involved in peacekeeping? Yeah, I, I was in active duty. What was that experience like? It was something different and it was a lot of good learning in it for us people who went to residential schools. We, we learned a lot of how to make a living for ourselves, a lot of us in the Army. What interested you in joining the Armed Forces? Well, the Chief from the Reserve got about six other guys and himself to join the Army, and they were doing that right in the little town of Punachai, where we, the little town we live in, or go, going to shop in. So my cousin went, so I followed him. And I was 16 years old at the time, so the guy said, you're too young to go anywhere. And the chief says, yeah, but he's strong. Oh, no, they took me right away. Never, nobody ever bothered me again. <clears throat> um, where did you serve? Did you go? I was overseas in France, Belgium, Holland, Germany. Did you live on the reserve before you left? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I lived on the reserve. I lived in a residential school, really, because I was uh, only out about uh, about six, seven, or eight months, and I was in the army. What was that like coming from the reserve and going to France? It was quite different, you know, and uh, it was a different life altogether. But you had to depend on the other vet uh, veterans, soldiers, to make sure that you made your way through. They weren't always alone. There was always other veterans around. Um, how did the war impact you? In the sense of, as I say, learning. I learned how to look after myself and make my own way in the in in, in the civilian life. I still don't know how to write, but I I couldn't. I was things that I got. I was a stationary engineer, and I just talked. They asked me questions, and I answered them. And another guy wrote them down for me when I wrote it, when I answered them. So that's how I made it. It was just by getting myself in, involved in stuff. What kind of benefits did you receive when you got back? Nothing. Exactly. Very, very little. I got, uh, I think, a couple of thousand dollars. And then I got a quarter section of ranches. I got my dad's land that he got when he was in, uh, when he, after he come back from the war. And we only had it for 10 years. That's the, that's the, you know. So the kids had nothing. There was nothing left for anybody. How does that make you feel? That, that, that was the hard part of it. That's why I was Grand Chief and I, we finally made, got a bit of money, but we had other people who got a hell of a lot more than we did, who were not veterans, which... Um, what is the significance of First Nations people's involvement in war? The thing is, you didn't have to, you didn't have to join. The First Nations people were never obligated to join in the war. Because it was our land, and we didn't have to. We we're not fighting for it. But a lot of us went in, and, and and I I think it was a good serving purpose. Like our chief was in the First World War, so he must have thought it was pretty good being the First World War. So he wanted to be in the Second World War. So we got a bunch of us to join. Like they never asked me because I was too young, but I snuck in with them anyway. Were you treated any differently when you came back to Canada? Like when you're in uniform, were you treated any different than if you were 
just in civilian clothes? Yep, we were treated like women. We couldn't go to the bar and drink. How did that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible, really. But we went on a, I was in, we done a November 11th deal in one of the, the little town that we lived near. And uh, they went into the, the white guys all went to the bar and they made me come in and they wouldn't serve me. So they all walked out and went to the next town down the road and I got served there so we were all right. But they all walked out of that little that little bar and they wouldn't they wouldn't because they wouldn't serve me. What do you want the federal government to do to recognize veterans? I think they I think something uh, they they had something going. They were trying to work in the hundred thousand dollars the progressive conservatives did, but the guy got beat, and nothing ever happened about it. Nobody got anything, and neither did the women. See, the white women and the meaty women got about six, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a month while their husbands were overseas, and a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, an Indian woman got twenty dollars a month while their husbands were overseas, and it actually says in the in the archives that we've got, like I've got them in at the house, that a woman, the Indian woman, has no doesn't know how to look after money, and that was the attitude they had. So they never got any money. Like I sent my mum twenty dollars a month out of my paycheck, but she never got any of it. Because my dad was getting a pension from the First World War. Um, what are you a member of the Veterans Memorial TV Committee? Pardon? Are you a member of the Veterans Memorial TV Committee? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. um, what is the significance of the glass TV that they're making currently? <clears throat> I think it's something that's good. I was hoping the, the names would go inside. For Saskatchewan, but I don't think we have no control really of what the heck's going on with it. We're having meetings and they're just telling us nothing. And I'm very, it's very unfortunate. If the veterans aren't uh, really having any say, who, who is say, who has to say, and what's going on with the TV? Same like it was before the university. The veterans got the money, I got the money to put, do this thing. And they, they sent it to the university. They didn't want to send it to the FSIN. But it didn't make any difference. It was used by somebody else anyway the first time. When the TP is completed, um, what do you hope this will bring for First Nations? Um, what what does the what does the glass TP coming up? What does that mean to you? Like, the I'm hoping it, it'll mean a lot to all of us. And to the people who are not veterans, I hope I hope they come and be part of this, because it's 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 a university thing too, really, more, you know. But uh, the it's the glass I think is going to be ideal to have there, and people can look inside. I mean, you you're not going to be able to come in all the time, because it'll like it is now. The door will be locked, but. It's, Everything is done, and then you know. That's why I think they want to put the names outside so people can see them outside instead of having to come in. And the computer thing that they're putting up is going to be fabulous. The people are quite anxious to see it so they can tell lies about their family first. No. <laughs>